So uh, my name is Austin. I'm from a little town in, in Michigan uh, called Bay City. Where my dad was a, a felon, you know, multiple felon. Uh, my mom was a partier. My sisters were seven and six years older than me. My brother too. None of them wanted nothing to do with me. Um, so I felt isolated right off the jump. Uh, so I found myself running the streets a lot. You know, being a little kid, five, six years old, running the streets till you know, way past the street lights came out. We moved around a lot. Uh, moved. I went to 11 different schools. Uh, always the new kid. You know, as the new kid, you just got to constantly prove yourself in every school you go to. The dude who was quick to, you know, you say something, you know, I got the wrong. It didn't matter if I knew you for 10 years. It didn't matter if I knew you for one day. Uh, you say something wrong, and I, I'd quick, quick to, to slap you up and, and put you in your place. Um, I lived my life knowing that every day might be my last, knowing that every time I walked out that door, there might be that, that time, you know, somebody from back when see me, you know, and, and ends my life, or I step on the wrong person's toes and think I'm a tough guy, and, and, and he ends my life. And still, you know, I've been to church a couple times, never really took it for nothing other than, you know, these people right here just want to believe in something that that's, that forgives them for the ugly that they do so they can continue to do ugly. You know, before Christ, I was, I was lost, and I would refuse to admit that I was lost. I would refuse to admit that something was broken, and I never held myself accountable for nothing. You know, it was only somebody else's fault. My pathway to Christ, I uh, started in 2005, uh, I met my wife, we were 14 years old, through her I found a little bit of what love could really be, um, how somebody could love you for you, and uh, she was pretty pretty spiritual and pretty religious and uh, kind of brought me a little closer to God. Found our way from Michigan down to Texas, and in Texas we didn't know anybody and we just had each other, and I think that just brought us a little closer. I went back to Michigan and I picked up a little little bit of Matthew and uh, there was one phrase in Matthew that spoke to me, and spoke wonders to me. Jesus came here for mercy, not for sacrifice. You, know, you, don't, call a, you don't call a doctor for the well, but you call a doctor for the sick. And that was probably the first thing that really spoke to me and really wanted me to, to pursue a path to Jesus. Uh, 2015, we made our way out here to Spokane, Washington. And I, I just lost my job. I met. I went to a job fair. Met with my my supervisor, who is now my current supervisor. And, and uh, you know, God spoke through her. But I found out we got a flyer to uh, to the Rock Church. Uh, it's the block party, and they had free hot dogs. <laughs> so uh, we decided to come for the, the hot dogs. Uh, not even gonna lie. Um, and you know, let the kids bounce around in the bouncy house. We didn't think anything of it. You know, Zach told me a little bit about you know how the rock feels and and how they go about with their mission and what their mission is. And we came on Sunday, and it was probably about the third third uh, service that we had when uh, we actually got the, the to eat the bread, you know, the, the bread of Christ and, and drink the, the punch. It spoke about how Jesus was crucified and, and the trials that he went through and. Uh, I never thought of it in that way. Like, thought, you know, I am a sinner and I deserve to pay for my sin, and, and Jesus paid exactly the price that I deserve. I remember meeting up with Zach here at the wake up call just down the street, and, you know, and I was telling him about my financial problems and, and how I was ready to go and uh, was ready to go rob to make my rent, to pay my bills. I don't even think Zach says anything deep. He just asked me how I got to this point in my life, and I broke down. And I bawled like a little baby, cried, couldn't keep myself together. I knew people see me, I knew people could hear me, but, but for some reason I just had to keep talking. Like I had to, to let go of what was on my heart. You know, I was such a wicked man. And you know, and come to that conclusion that I was wicked and that I needed Jesus in my life. And he didn't look at me with no judgment. He didn't look at me like, oh, look at this big old Mexican crying like a little baby girl. Uh, he ain't no tough guy. I don't care what he says. Um, you know, he accepted me and he, he just listened to what I had to say. And it was there, right there, that I, I did realize that I need a relationship with Jesus. Since I've committed and uh, decided to follow Jesus and be be a follower of Jesus, I've actually picked up the the Bible and and 
I'm reading the Bible for the first time in, in entirety since I, I have I, I, I am dedicating my life to Jesus. I am finally picking it up. I no longer want to be a fool. Um, I, I, I guess I didn't want to read the Bible because I wanted to remain ignorant of what the Bible had and the truth of the teachings. And since becoming a follower of Jesus, I'm, I, I know that that even though I, I stumble and even though I fall, um, that Jesus is here to pick me up and that he'll always be here. And knowing that just makes me want to be closer to him. and wants me, makes me want to bring other people closer to him. I've met with people and they've talked to my family and, and now I'm, all I do is talk about Jesus. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, it's really neat uh, to know that I, I talk about Jesus and I'm actively, not because I'm in a church environment or not because I'm talking you know, to speak to churchy people, but because he comes up in a conversation to know that I'm not living my life for just me, for my selfish wants or my selfish gains, but to be a leader um, of my family, to be a leader of, of you know, my, my wife, and they're, they're, they're following me and they know that I'm leaving my family to the right place by being with Jesus. And, uh, no matter how hard times get, if you have Jesus, you, you have joy. Today I'm taking my next step in baptism. Today, um Austin, we get to baptize you, but um, Austin, you've decided to follow Jesus. Yes, sir. Um, you trust in Jesus with with your life and your family. I do. Um, so, Austin, today I get to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, I was hoping the water's not freezing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. All right. So don't hold me in there. Yeah. <laughs> no. All right. Here we go. Oh, yes, sir. No.